David Kimberly and Michelle Laswear showing you what nasty milk looks like. <laughs> it's not nasty milk though, is it? No, it's something, probably one of the most important things you can ever take into your body. And tell us what that is. It's yogurt. No, it's not so yogurt. It's not yogurt, it's in yogurt. It can is. You guess? Can you guess what it is? It's in yogurt. That's why everybody's saying, oh, you gotta drink lots of yogurt. But Michelle knows the advanced yogurt. What is it? Uh -huh. This is actually called kefir. And it is basically, it's fermented milk. And what it does is it has like, I, I believe there's like 30 to 40 different bacteria in it. And it, it's really amazing for rebuilding the gut. Now, I had you to start doing this where you take, I, I gave him a little bit of my culture. Mm -hmm. And that's basically, when I very first started it, I bought a box and we will give you the link for that. It'll be just below. And the box came with these little flakes that looked like dehydrated milk. Okay. And there was probably no bigger than a quarter. And I would, you know, I put it in a glass of milk about, you know, maybe about an inch and a half, two inches high. Okay. And then I drained it out the next day and I did that for four days. What and kind then of milk? just, you want to use organic milk. So it has to be organic and you want it, it has to have fat in it. It cannot have, um, be fat free. The fat is very important. And the neat thing is these active bacteria actually go in and they eat up the lactose and the sugar. So it makes it a completely different product. But so once it's fermented, have this. yeah, it's really good for them because they usually have a, a, a they usually have a bacteria issue. They don't have enough friendly bacteria in their intestinal tract. The kefir is fermented milk. And so when I very first started, uh, a good friend of mine, her child had had cancer and she's the one that, she said this was one of the most important things that she felt that she did for her child. As she did her research, she found out that we are the only country that does not eat fermented products. Everywhere you go in the world, they have fermented products. These fermented products actually build the friendly bacteria in your intestinal tract. And I think that's why we're seeing so much celiac, IBS, all these kinds of issues. And those all can be traced back to not enough healthy okay. bacteria. Cereal, uh, celiac is? That is basically people that are, have an allergy to gluten. And, and some, my favorite, what's IBS? IBS is irritable bowel syndrome. You don't want that. No, usually these are people spend a lot of time in the bathroom. Crohn's, same way. So anybody watching this, you'll know if you have those two. Anybody yes. <laughs> watching this, you don't want those two. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but the thing is, is as you get to the fourth day, the milk gets thicker and thicker and mm -hmm. thicker, and then you know the culture's ready. And then basically, you put it in a, and it needs to be in a glass or a plastic bowl. Metal will kill your culture. So it's really important, even the whisk I use, this is all rubber. So you can't use any metal, it will kill your culture. The neat thing about these cultures is they they basically eat up all the lactose and they take care of all the sugar. That's kind of what they do. And so we're kind of going to show you it backwards. Um, and before I do that, I'm going to kind of explain the difference. You can buy kefir in the store and this is fine, but basically it's glorified yogurt. What they do is they make it, they make a yogurt and because it has to be pasteurized legally, then what happens is it kills all the bacteria. So then they have to add in 10 probiotics where when you make it yourself, it has anywhere from 30 to 40 different cultures in it. As good as they are, they don't stick to the walls of the intestines as well as these kind of, these are literally organisms that are alive and they actually communicate with everything else in our body. And so that's why these life cultures are so important. I had a, uh, I've been taking a probiotic since I met Michelle uh, years ago. She got to keep it in the refrigerator. She teaches me all these tricks that I was just unaware of about general health. You know, I'll take these guys and try to create transformations out of them. I tell them they got to spend their money on a probiotic. They're wondering where the creatine or the bells and whistles are. Uh, we got to start first. We got to start stuff that just makes your body feel better. So when it came to her later and I came over to her house and she was had this rotten milk on her <laughs> counter and, uh, okay, you're going to have to talk to me. You want me to drink that? I can't even have milk. I'm all worried about lactose and everything. She explained to me that it all goes away. So Michelle, what do I do about my probiotic then? I've got all these billion cultures in there. And she just negated my question on video and right. did to me that day as well saying, this is just much better. It is. And if you can't afford it, you know, if you're limited on funds, these cultures just keep on growing. I, get, I have given away so much of this original one I started and even yours has grown and you've given it away mm -hmm. so they can, and they'll go for thousands of batches. So you get a, you get a little uh, quarter size deal, right? Yes. You stick it in there and then as it eats the milk, essentially it grows. And it looks like a, a solid piece of cotton. Well, we're going to show them what it looks oh, we're like. We're going to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're going to kind of do this backwards because I've already got a batch ready to go. And so this is kind of what it looks like. And sometimes you'll see, you know, depending on how long I let it sit, you'll actually see the way that separates from it. But it gets thicker and thicker by the day. You can see how thick this is. And so some of that is the cultures. You know, you can Come see on right over there. Here and look at this, would you? This is one of the cultures right there. You can see there's a big old culture there. 
and so it kind of gets sometimes it'll separate and so I use a whisk and I go in and I will take and whisk it now this has only been sitting for a day and a half okay, chunky milk is normal on yes in the Swear house okay, yes this is normal <laughs> It's supposed to look like that. Yes. And you know what? I'm not a huge fan of dairy. This is pretty much the only kind of dairy that we do in our home is cultured dairy because we want those organisms. And another thing that people don't realize, if you're not eating dairy and you've got a probiotic, you can't, that probiotic you can't use because dairy activates many of those cultures that they're using. So that is another that's thing that's really nice. Yes, years later. People, I didn't know that. Yes. Yeah, so you have to be very careful about if you're Would not doing dairy. Would protein act as that? Yeah, I mean, if it's part of the dairy, I'm not sure on that, to the be honest with you. Question. Yeah, okay. I'm not sure if that would be. Okay. So anyway, so we've kind of got it. So talk, it's talk about smell too. This does yes, not smell. It has a um, vinegary. I think is what mm -hmm. I think of. I always think of more of a vinegar. If you like apple cider vinegar, that is also fermented and cultured. And the more cultured things you can have, this, the apple cider vinegar, kombucha, mm -hmm. uh, sauerkraut. These are things that should be a part of your diet. They are really important in overall health. So then what I'll do is once I've mixed it up and got it so it's looking really nice and smooth, I'll take and I, you want to strain it. And again, notice the chunks. Yeah. And the strainer is plastic. It's not metal. Everything's plastic. Yes. And so um, I got that at Walmart. It was like $1.50. So it's cheap. And so what I do is I take and I move this around mm -hmm. and I let it strain through. It's actually pretty good. You get it's an acquired taste you get, so it you is. enjoy. It. And you can use this in your shakes and stuff. Well, I get to and get fruits. Feeling good. I yeah. Mean, really, it's. Well, you know what? Ever since we put you on this, you're you being you got leaner and you've stayed leaner. My water. It's been I, easier. I was having a digestion issue. If you want to call it that, we're going to simplify the world and say, David, you're puffy. You're eating foods that make you puffy. Uh, to me, it sounded like a. Uh, a lactose issue or a celiac issue, or, you know, I look at all the, the things that happen to them when they eat their foods, in a sense, it's, a, it's an allergic reaction to me. That's how I break right. it down simply. And I was having an allergic reaction to food and could not figure it out. Came home last Christmas, she sent me home with some, some chunks of these. just like that. And you that. know what? Literally, I probably sent Dave home with about, I'll show you. Yeah, Let me jump this much. in here. I probably sent him home with a little speck like that. That's it. And he'll, it will, his probably grew, it's probably it's twice that size. Yeah, it's huge. I've been giving it away a lot. So, and then I just put it back in the bowl and then I'll add more milk to it to get the next batch going. And then I just use this. Some people that I know are really toxic and really have problems. I'll start them out actually with this kefir and then I'll move them to this one. And so I've just used the bottles. I, they're great for reusable. Is that so they don't detox so hard? Yes, because again, this will detox you. I guarantee yeah. it. Now, if you struggle with constipation, this you have to start out with literally like a tablespoon. We're getting real now. Yep. Now, those that have issues with diarrhea all the time, like people with IBS, this will fix that. So my people that are constipated, I start them out with sauerkraut, and I'll actually have them to drink the juice. And then um, my people that are more, their, their stools are more lax, then I start them out with kefir. Somebody, that's, that's enough for them for like an entire week, and now they've got their, their culture sitting in here. What do they do to store it? I'm going on vacation. Um, I don't, I'm not going to be home for two weeks. How do I keep it from, because I've, I've kept mine on the bowl too long and we got to talk about that too. Okay. So how, how do they store it? Okay. So what happens is, is I usually put mine in a little glass Pyrex bowl and mine has a little cover, plastic cover on it. And again, you don't want to use metal and I just put it in the fridge and I put, remember these are living organisms. What they live off of is the sugar in the milk and the lactose. So they need food. So you, what I do is I take, kind I put creepy. it in there. Yeah, I put it in there and then I feed it. I feed my baby. That's what I call mm -hmm. it. And so I'll just top it with some milk. And when I'm ready to use it again, that milk's going to be pretty thick. Mm -hmm. And so I just dump that right in with it and just whisk it into okay. the new milk. And so you can use it. And so when I'm done doing this, like I said, I will take and this is kind of how I do it. I kind of rinse this out because there's usually a little bit of cultures and I usually rinse my strainer off. Oh, that's clever. So I get all the stuff off. I didn't do that. I didn't know to do that. Yeah. Because I don't want to make sure I leave any of the culture on there. Saving the cultures. And then I will take and I will add a little bit more milk. So you used milk to clean off your other culture holding mm -hmm. deal. I do because okay. there's bacteria and sure. stuff. I want that. I want that stuff. And then I just. It looks like you have plenty of bacteria though. 
Well, I just always do it that way. You just, you want it. How much is too much? There isn't. The the thing is, is the bigger the culture, the faster it'll Mm -hmm. get thicker. And so like a small culture will take longer to to culture. It won't be as strong. The bigger the culture and and that you're doing, the stronger it's going to be. Okay, I had an experience. Uh, I left out of town and I forgot my 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 culture uh, uh-huh. it's like a pet you know what don't go buy a pet let's even throw a culture first here so i'm in the big city and i left it there and when i came back it was in a clear bowl mm-hmm. so i could see almost like a crust on top and it was really watery like clear water underneath okay the water underneath is whey that's whey protein if you were to strain that off that is pure whey that has not been denatured it's, i threw it away it no that's whey i looked at it because it started to smell not like mm-hmm. this it started no. to smell not no, that's the way. So what was happening, and my husband just went to a cheese factory, but that's what happened when they make cheese, is they pull the whey off, but it's what's happening is the culture, if you just let it go, it'll turn into cheese. And so you'll have a fermented cheese that you can eat. But and I so that's what it is. It didn't smell good. No, believe it or not. Like, I've that actually, doesn't smell bad, right? No, but believe it or not, I've done it and let it go, and it's kind of almost like a cottage cheese look. Yeah. And then you put it on a sal- salad, and it tastes like feta. Okay, it's so, very no, no, good. Wait, wait, wait. Now, we're going to be real right now. Okay. I came home, and it was almost like How a, many days? Ten. No, it was, it was turning to cheese. And it's it, very good. It was crusted, almost like a yeah. pie you put in the oven, like a uh-huh. banana pie, cream pie, and you know how the, the, the white mm-hmm. gets, whatever that topping yeah. is, gets a little crusted? So it was like that, and I looked at it, and it was so perfectly clear underneath. You are telling me I could have eaten that. Absolutely. Okay, I threw it away. So you don't have a culture anymore? No, I had to, I, I had so many cultures that I was giving them all away, because I think this is such an amazing idea, and everybody knows you got to have my culture to share. And so I was able to take a chunk of my buddy's culture, who had been growing it oh, for the okay. last few months, so I, I was able to read up, uh-huh. but I, I had no idea that I could save that. Oh, absolutely. Because like I said, what you're doing is you're making cheese. And so, and it tastes really good. I've done it, and it on a salad, it is so good. That's gonna but have to be another tons, episode. I, that's yeah, it's tons of bacteria. It didn't smell good. Okay. Once you get it like this, then what happens is you just take. I use cloth diapers because I had a baby nine years ago, and I have no other use for this, and got grandkids. So, anyway, and I just cover it up. She washed sure, it first. Yeah, and then you just leave it like that on your co- your counter for two to three days. And then you do what I did. You just whisk it, straight it off, and you've got your, your culture. How important is this? Okay, to me, fermented foods are the most important thing. They're the number one priority because as long as you're getting the fermented foods, you're going to be healthy. 85% of your immune system is in your intestinal tract. So as long as you have healthy bacteria, then we're going to be healthier. Okay. Get all you specific. guys that are using the sucralose, the crappy mm-hmm. protein powders, and all the supplements your pre and post workout check for the sucralose if you have it you're killing your bacteria off the research shows that it kills 50 percent of your friendly bacteria so if you're sucralosing it with your protein powder your pre and post workouts mm-hmm. we all are how much sucralose are you getting per day and if you're getting a lot you don't have very much friendly bacteria so for you this is the number one priority okay so especially my guys taking protein shakes we all do it uh and i, I honestly had a water retention issue this last winter and i started taking this and it was I'm very specific in my equations, guys. I know it goes in my body, when it goes in my body, and why it's going in my body. I added this to it, changed nothing else, and my face literally let go of this layer, this funny layer that I was having. Well, and again, because I've known you for so long, I've been working for you, he no longer does the, his body would do this weird yo-yo. He's not changing anything. His mm-hmm. equation is the same, but you're you're going like this, and now you just stay lean. So you set a priority. We're, we're going to put her on the spot here. Okay. <laughs> Multivitamin. No, I would put this over multi. Uh, fish Absolutely. oil. I would go. I would go probiotics. Okay. I would go um, omegas, and they have to be um, pharmaceutical grade, so no heavy metals. So you want to make sure that it should say it on the label somewhere. If it doesn't say it, it has heavy metals in it, and that's a whole nother pharmaceutical grade. Yeah, you want pharmaceutical okay. grade. Does some people pay extra to put on their label? Absolutely. Well, no, because here's what happened. This is what pharmaceutical means. It means for every hundred gallons that they process to get the metals out, there's only ten gallons that are usable. So the other ninety are sold to other people. And so it's very important not to have the heavy metals because, again, that affects your weight, it affects memory, it affects a lot of different things. So for me, probiotics, number one. Next thing would be um, an omega. And then the next thing, it would be a whole food multi. Okay. So, and minerals. Mineral, I would probably put minerals before because all my fitness people, I notice, all low, low, low minerals. Can we manipulate the minerals and vitamin to be the same thing? Not always because they don't have the right sources and they're not getting the minerals from the right places. Because the bad thing about minerals is... Uh, unlike um, vitamins, 
you pee those out if you take too much. Mm -hmm. Where minerals, they, they, you don't pee them out. They settle in the weaker parts of your body. So, like I said, when you get bad calcium for men, it goes to their prostate. And so, you know, different okay. things, yeah. yeah. For different places, everybody might, you know, everyone has their weaker part of the body. Those are those minerals goes. So you want to make sure that the minerals that you're getting are coming from a source that's highly bioavailable. Guys, we like talking about this stuff, so I guess we should probably tell you how to finish it. We've, uh, we've showed you what it looks like. We've told you where to buy it. You've seen the little link. It's going to come in something. Yeah, a little milk. We're good. It's very easy. But where does this go? Where does it sit? So I just leave mine on my counter. So just let it do it for two or three days. Then once I've put it in the bottle, then it goes in the fridge and it'll last over a month. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like I said, for someone that's just starting out and they're just doing an ounce or two, this will last them quite a while. So you've taken the culture out of it. Right. Which now makes it uh, can't sustain its own life. Even though there are like right. life cultures in right. it, there's not enough like the mother. They don't have food. Okay. It's like if you don't have food, you're not gonna be alive. But it's still alive. It is. You're it's drinking something that's alive. Alive. And that's okay. really important. As much as possible, you always want to get live living things in your body, not dead food. And that's now a whole nother. That, that's that that's I'm already <laughs> confused. Okay, so literally this is gonna go over here on your yep. counter where it's gonna there. I keep mine in my cupboard, is that okay? Yep. That's fine, as long as the air can get And I remember a conversation we had about, uh, it was switching from winter to summer. And I remember that my... Uh, culture. Culture was growing so much faster. It, was, it is. The warmer the air, the faster the culture. So okay. in the summer, you might notice that culture's in 24 hours. In the winter, it might take, you know, 48 or more. So I usually winter, mine will usually go three days. And then I straight. And uh, last but not least, special recipes. I've, I've had, uh, and, and you'll have to tell me if this is right. Uh, I've got a little buddy who, who hits me up and I gave him some and he says, Dave, I mix it up in my protein shake. Absolutely. And I said, yeah, but when you mix it in your protein shake, you're using a metal blender. You know, that's the point. Um, what I, because you know what, it's really quick and they're drinking it right mm -hmm. down. It's not just sitting in there. Mm -hmm. Probably, you know. I like it. She's going to have to bend a little bit for yes. us, right? There's life that's yes. going to happen. Well, and the thing is, what I like to do that's really important is when my feet hit the floor, I usually drink at least mm -hmm. a half uh, or a couple of ounces to a half a cup. Because again, you've got an empty stomach, those bacteria are going right to the intestines, they're going right on the wall. One of the things so, I was doing when I first started it, because I just couldn't get over, you know, I am not trying to have milk, and before I really understood it, I was just doing what I was told, which works well for me. Um, <laughs> I was chasing it down with this. They make a raspberry one. I don't right. know why you bought plain. Yeah. But they make a raspberry one. loves this. My oh. little boy All loves right. this plain one. He does. So, okay. Well, I like the More plain the yogurt sugar. too. They got a good frozen yogurt that I like yeah. that's uh, low sugar. Anyway, moving forward, uh, I would chase it with something like this. So you might just have to be that person that... You slowly have this, to work Michelle said this is good for me until I see results. I'm going to believe her. And then, and it's not that bad, but it is, it's intimidating. You just put milk on your, on your deal here. So. Yeah. We're gonna it's have to definitely close an acquired here. test, a taste. Mm -hmm. So what else do you want to know? We got about another 30 seconds. That's it, just again, you want the probiotics. If you really want to be healthy and see results, and again, if you want to use the things you are putting in your body, your absorption, the more cultures you have in your intestinal tract, the oh. better absorption. Wait, 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 we missed the best thing. What? How much does this cost? Um, the pennies. culture, how much do you buy? Oh, the, the culture is like $12 in the last years. Okay, I'll spend $30 a month at least on probiotics. Thank yeah. you guys for watching.